Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another RetroJunkie.net video. Uh, today we are trying something new. I'm doing a voice dub over some high-speed video. Don't expect too much from this video though. Uh, everything was a complete failure. <laughs> the Xbox 360 did not work, so if you're expecting to repair your Xbox 360, go look at another guide. This one is more of a guide as to how to take it apart, how not to heat it with a heat gun, We'll run into that a bit later on, but uh, just a hint, head toward the end of the video and you'll see oh, the board does flex a bit unless it's on a very flat surface, although I possibly heated it for too long as well. Um, as you can see here, we're just taking apart the Xbox. Uh, it took me a very long time to get these grey clips off. Uh, this is sped up eight times, so every minute is eight minutes. <laughs> it was not very enjoyable. But as you can see, I eventually get pretty close and then I you know, get stuck on this bit, which is where the hard drive caddy sits in. You just keep poking at it, eventually something happens. There's something happening there. I know I can work this one out. I've gone somewhere else. What have I gone to get? Different screwdriver maybe? Oh, there we go. Actually, I probably went to read the uh, how-to guide. So once you've got the top and bottom plastics off, you can remove the uh, outer casing. And then you've got a bunch of screws. I believe they're T10 or T8. Uh, I was using a screwdriver that was not a very good fit and didn't have a very good handle, so it took me quite some time to get the screws out. Damn, it's cool watching this in high speed. EMI tape there, flip it around. Don't know what I'm playing with there at the front. Oh, I was removing the thing. Uh, DVD drive comes out next, as you can see. Magic SATA connector. Very impressed with that. And I don't know what I was talking about on this because I've deleted the old audio. So I'm going to say that I might have been talking about air vents. That side is very blocked. Yes, capacitors, they're all uh, Nichicon, I noticed. Oh, there's actually some Rubicons on the back behind that vent. Very good, Japanese capacitors. Uh, next bit was vent and then fans. I don't know if fans need to come out, but I took them out. Uh, I got stuck on this bit. Why wasn't the board coming out? What's going on? Oh, I found more screws. They actually hold the uh, X clamps to the uh, base. But there's, that's not the only thing holding it in, there's one more thing. Let's see if I can find it. That's right, that front board. There's another screw hidden underneath the uh, plastic. There, there we go. And then it just pulls out. And the board, just wedge it out, and it's free. X-clamps. Everybody's talking about X-clamps. A knife is not a very good tool. Neither is a small flat blade. <laughs> a large flat blade is what you want, or a plastic tool, preferably, so you don't damage any of the traces. I did notice that I came very close to damaging some. Too close. The next clamp. Uh, another X clamp, they come out. Found the only really need to loosen two, maybe even one. You probably get out with one if you jiggled it around enough. And the heatsink just lifts off. Look at that, they're both off. Now the thermal paste on these, on my one, was, it's like they'd mixed in concrete, some sort of adhesive. Because I tried so hard to get these clean, I didn't succeed 100%. There's the CPU, other one was the GPU. So now we're gonna add some flux, I believe, if I remember. So I used a dropper. Flux helps the solder balls do something. It's hard to remember. So many nights ago, two nights. As you can see there, flux is on the board. Make sure it leaks out of all sides. And the same with the CPU. And now here comes the fun bit. Keep your eyes on this. Watch the board flex as it's heated. Look at that. Isn't that just amazing? And watch it as it cools. Incredible. Uh, screws. So these are the replacement things for the X clamps held on by tape. 
screws come through to the other side, you put some washers on. You also, oh, I found that you need to uh, remove the things off the heat sinks. Uh, as you can see, I'm putting on the steel washers on top of the nylon washers. Same on the other side. And these things come out, so you can actually get the screws in. One major problem I had with this is that the screw heads were, um, they sort of stuck out quite significantly, so they would not fit. The motherboard wouldn't sit flat in, on, in the uh, EMI case, as you can see there on the X clamps. There's only a very small amount of room. Maybe on the earlier versions that didn't have HDMI built in, there was a bit more space. But unfortunately for this one, not the case. No space at all. So not suited for this repair and uh, if I could do it all again I'd use different screws but ultimately I didn't win. So as you can see it's in a garbage bag there. Um, completely useless to me. Uh, stay tuned, we're going to have a, another video on the, uh, the PlayStation repair that I did. Here's a hint, it went as well as the Xbox 360 repair. Yeah. So terribly sorry about that, but uh, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to subscribe. Um, as a rule, I always upload failures as well as successes. It makes for good video. Learn from my mistakes, please. I insist. Never stop repairing, though. And here's the outro. Although I did get these cool ninja stars out of it. Ninja stars!